Well, this afternoon I'm very pleased to be meeting with Kathleen Burns Kingsbury, the president of KBK Connections. Correct. And she, we are very excited that Kathleen has agreed to be the keynote speaker for our October 22nd event at the uh, Holiday Inn in Rockland. So welcome, Kathleen. Thank you. I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about your business and what it is you do. I am a money intelligence coach, and what I do is I do coaching, writing, training, and I also um, do some consulting around how to be emotionally intelligent around your money. That sounds very interesting. Can you give a little bit of a specific how that, how does that, what do you mean when you talk about that um, for the nonprofit sector? What does okay. that mean? For the nonprofit sector, how I might come in and help somebody out is I would come in and evaluate what are some of their um, roadblocks, and these would be emotional roadblocks, in order to either take care of their finances properly or to ask for money. I know a lot of nonprofits are having to fundraise and be put in fundraising positions with or without training. And when you have to ask for money, what ends up happening is all of your history around money, whether you're aware of it or not, is in the room asking the donor for money as well. So that might do a couple of things. One thing is it might allow you to be really good at asking for money. Another thing it might do is really make you feel very uncomfortable even just talking about dollars and cents. So what I do is I go in and I assess that either individually or with the team in a nonprofit and then work with the key people to help them figure out how they can understand their money psychology so they can ask for money, so then they can get the donations that they need, so then they can be profitable and sustainable. Sounds extremely interesting. Yeah. It's fun, actually. It's a lot of fun when people get involved in it. It can be really interesting. Well, how did you get involved with this? How did you discover this is a, a great niche for you? Uh, in a very, very roundabout way. Um, the bottom line is I have worked in uh, healthcare and nonprofits for 15, 20 years. Uh, so most of my career, I've worked in that sector in some capacity, whether it's full-time or as a volunteer. And so really uh, care and really am interested in understanding the psychology of individuals and people and teams. So that was a big component of going into uh, money emotions counseling. And then what ended up happening was I had been an FDIC bank examiner, commission bank examiner, back in the 90s when the savings and loan crisis, the old one, was happening right. and at the time I really thought oh this finance thing it's not for me and so stepped out of the financial world went into more of the nonprofit helping world and then discovered maybe about three years ago that wait a second there's this financial training that I have that could be really useful for these folks who are in helping professions and so started to combine them started doing some women and money workshops around empowering women to not be under earners, and that certainly lent itself to the nonprofit world, and then snowballed into a full-time career, and uh, I just keep looking for new places to spread the message because I think it's an important one. What are some of the challenges you uh, see nonprofits face when it comes to the ask or yeah. fundraising? A lot of the challenges that nonprofits face are very, very similar to the ones that people in corporations face. They probably wouldn't know that. But a lot of what the roadblocks are, are these emotional roadblocks. So people often, when it comes to asking for money, now whether you're asking on behalf of a nonprofit or whether you're asking for yourself, often what ends up happening is there is an, an avoidance of the topic. Like people will talk about everything these days, I mean everything. But when you ask somebody their salary or you know, did you give a donation and how much, people kind of clam up. So I talk to people a lot about, you know, how do you not avoid the topic? How do you just jump into it? And how do you become comfortable with it? And the other emotional roadblock is often fear. Like fear you're going to insult somebody. Fear you're going to overstep your bounds or you're going to make an assumption that's not true. So we get so caught up in our heads about everything that might happen that we end up never having those conversations. And sometimes, especially in nonprofits, sometimes people like to be asked. I mean, it's an honor to say, will you contribute to my organization? I mean, that feels good. And especially for a lot of the donors out there who happen to have money, they are actively looking for places to place their funds and want to build trust and a relationship and know that that money's going to be used well. So in some ways, you're really doing them a service. Um, but people need to be trained and understand, how do, I, how do I take my own thoughts and beliefs about money evaluate them and get them out of the way if they don't make sense when it comes to asking for money in this scenario. Does that so make sense? Absolutely. Okay. So you do see a, a strong connection between 
the way the, the issues that are sort of someone in the business world as well as someone in the not-for-profit world. Definitely. Well, they're both businesses, and the way I look at it is really the nonprofit world. Um, while there's a whole culture to it, it's really a tax status, and so in some ways, it's a way of doing business that was created as a tax status that has then become a culture. And so, corporate culture is often seen as bad, and nonprofit is seen as good. And I really work in a variety of places, and you know, my heart actually is in nonprofit because I've worked in it so long to help people see that it's not good or bad, it's just shades of gray, and that we all have trouble asking for money. Some of us have trouble receiving money. That's another thing. Someone gives you a really big donation, and all of a sudden you're uncomfortable. You thought, oh, this is going to be great. And next thing you know, you're staring at a million dollar check going, I just don't feel comfortable with this. So it can work in all different kinds of ways. And really the work is just becoming aware of what your personal money or your money personality is, so your personal relationship with money, how that impacts how you work in a nonprofit or what it, in whatever capacity, and then how do you get out of your own way? And often people can have a lot of fun, and it can benefit them not only professionally, but it can benefit them personally as well. That sounds like it. Now, that to me, I can relate to that on a personal level. Now, how would you work with a team? Well, with a team of folks, it's really figuring out what does everybody's money personality look like. And once again, there's not a good or bad money personality. There's some research that's been done by a Kathleen Gurney, she's a PhD, and she did research in the 80s, and developed a tool called the Money Max, which actually helps people take a really quick quiz, basically, and you come up with nine different money personalities. So with a team, I might have them all take that quiz and then share their money personalities and start to understand why is it that Joanne, you know, has such trouble trusting, you know, our CPA that she, you know, doesn't, she's questioning everything he's doing, and, you know, why is it that John is so quick to ask people for money? And so it's really understanding that probably goes back to how they were raised, what their thoughts and beliefs are, what their experiences are, and this particular type of uh, personality testing just gives you a really nice, concrete way to start to talk about it as a team, and then figure out whose personality fits best for what task, and how can we be financially just more responsible and, you know, really draw on people's strengths. Oh, Kathleen, uh, if you were to meet someone, we'll say that I have a, a, a real tough time with the ask. Mm -hmm. Do you have any quick three tips, perhaps, that you could that sure. help me? Sure, sure. What I tell people is to think of their ABCs. It's just a really quick, easy way to start to work on your ability to ask for money and get paid what you're worth, or in this case, fundraise. So the AB stand, ABCs excuse me, stand for A is the ask, B is believe, and C is create. So A is to ask. You would not believe the number of people who just never ask for the money. You know, they go to the meeting, they meet with donors, they have lunch, they do whatever, and then they leave and they find out, oh, I never asked for the donation. So part of it is to just work at every time that you're in a fundraising situation, no matter what you're feeling, to try to ask. And so that's practicing, just putting it out there. The second one is believe. And this is, this is a really hard one. This is where the majority of my work is. It's like believe in your cause, believe in the ask. And you really have to be confident and say, you know what, I really believe that either this organization deserves the money, or say you're the you know, founder of the organization, so it, it often gets kind of mixed up with your identity, that I deserve this money and I believe that it's a worthwhile cause. And while people may say that uh, intellectually, it's something else to have the confidence and the self-esteem to be able to ask and believe. So that's a lot of the work that I do. And the last, and this one's actually fun, the C is create. And so create is creating opportunities to be funded. You know, often people say, especially with this economy, you know, the economy's bad, nobody's funding anything. And I say, what a great opportunity to think outside the box and be creative. Think about how you can get sponsors. Think about a program that might be something that would get people's attention and raise awareness and also bring in funds. So it's ask, believe, create. And when you keep those three things in mind, you actually do a really great job of fundraising. I really like that ABC. I can remember that. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome.